Okay, good morning everyone. We are f- f- continuing the halachot of Bored. Some of the most difficult and important halachot of Ilchot Shabbat. And here I want to uh, discuss a halacha that is um, very relevant to many aspects of Shabbat. We have said, in, we said last time that there are three conditions that need to be met in order for there not to be a prohibition of Bored. The first is that it should be with your hand. The second, it should be done good from bad. And the third, it should be done for right away. Now, let's, con- let's focus on the first condition, which is it has to be done with your hand and not with a vessel, not with a kli. A kli means something that is made to separate. So, what is called something separating? A filter, any type of filter whatsoever. There was a a type of, of uh, vessel that was used in Morocco in order to prepare the tea and then to pour it. I think we call it the fin- finjan, the finjan, the the uh, the, um, the 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 teyer, they call it in French. That you would that they would pour and there would be a filter and it prevents the tea leaves from coming out. So how do you prepare tea? Whether it was done before on Shabbat or not, we've discussed. But you have a way that the tea was made was made on Shabbat in a permissible manner. It was made before Shabbat and it's on the fire. And now you want to pour. When you're pouring, those tea leaves are being stopped by the filter. Now you're taking good from bad. You're doing it right away. But you don't have the first condition, which is, has to be done with your hand and not with a kli. And over here it's being done with a kli. So the Yosef Birdugo, one of the great hachamim from Meknes, uh, in, uh, in his Sefer, Shufre de Yosef, spoke out against this. He said it's absolutely, it's absolutely forbidden. He writes that, uh, that this teyer that people have, right, and he writes this in, um, in, in his Sefer, I believe it's in the Sefer, uh, Shufre de Yosef, but Rabbi Shalom Bissas brings it, in Orachayim Siman Tevuat Shamesh, Orachayim Siman Lamed, Right, that categorically it's forbidden. Nevertheless, we had a minhag to permit it. Where did this minhag come from? The Bet Menucha, one of the most famous sidurim and sfarim that we used in Morocco, written by Rav Yudah Shmuel Ashkenazi, writes about this. He calls it the Librik B'Shabbat. He calls it that originally it's forbidden. But for some reason, despite the fact that he said that it was forbidden, Rabbi Yosef Mesas in Maim Chaim Chelik Alev Siman Kud Yud Ched Dibur Matchil Ve'ach writes that we see that everybody uses it. Minhaga Pashut that everybody uses this Librik and they pour from tea. Rabbi Shalom Mesas also writes this in the aforementioned place to watch Shabbos that everybody uses it. The question is, how is it possible that they use it? How do you are separating from a with a vessel with a, with a kli on Shabbat? So. There is a chazonish that explains the reason why such a thing would be allowed. It's a very deep chazonish. And the chazonish says in Orachim Simanun Gimel the following. That if you have the tea that's settled on the bottom and the water that's on top and you're pouring, the chazonish calls your action an action of pouring and not an action of borer. It's a very important principle by Borer, which we're going to see again, which is if you're lacking the fundamental kavana, even if it's sure going to happen, but you're not focusing on doing Borer, when you're pouring and the water is coming out and it's, the, and it's, it's, it's happening on its own as a secondary action, the Chazunish permitted it. So over here too, it would be allowed because of this reason, as we see those the Minhag in Morocco. Rabbi Shalom Misaz gives another reason. It's a very controversial reason that he gives. The Biura Lacha in Siman Shid Yutet brings the Teshuva, the famous opinion of the Mahari Tats, the Mahari Tzahalon. The Mahari Tzahalon says that the reason why he saw some people removing a fly out of the, out of the tea is because it's not called a mixture. Even before we have to deal with the three conditions, you have to determine whether something is called a mixture or not. This is the Maritza Alon. If you have a fly with, with water, it's two separate distinct things. That's, it's called Brera Belach. It's called, there's no Borer on things that are mixed. So, uh, on things that are mixed. It's not called a Tarovit. It's not called a mixture. And if it's not called a mixture, you're, you're missing the prerequisite of Borer. Based on this, 
based on this, Rabbi Shalom Misa says that even if you would shake the tea leaves and you would pour, it would also be allowed because it's not called a mixture because it's called solid and liquid. He extends this, Rabbi Shalom, even to other things like eggs with the peel that you would be able to remove the peel even if you wouldn't eat it right away because it's not called a mixture and that's highly controversial. He wants to say that's why you're allowed to shell things without even eating right away because of this Maritza Alon. That in my Sefer Magen Avot, Siman Shun Yutel, I discussed that it's not so simple at all. But the actual basic heter of using the tea would seem to be that it's something that was used in Morocco. So once again, something that, uh, that like tea that had a filter was the Minhag in Morocco. And based on this, maybe removing a bug from the water maybe might be allowed. But to extend it further is very controversial. And that would be for another time. Chazaku Baruch.